people and welcome to the workshop oh hang on let's turn it all on there we go and look what i got there's a company called Vivor who make excellent tools and they want people like me to make films about them and if they have a tool which i could actually demonstrate and like and use they send me one as a sample and i make them a film and i get to keep the tool Aha! Look what I need. Can you guess? This is the workshop and it's really cold. So, Vivor said, would I like to demonstrate their latest diesel heater? Diesel heater? Sounds good. It's a heater that would heat up my workshop. And here it is. So why would the diesel heater work for me? Well, first of all, the workshop is cold and needs heating. But let me tell you, we changed our oil furnace for one of these. This is a pellet stove and it heats the house with hot water and it's really good. We like it because a bag of pellets is only five euros and we can buy a bag when we've got five euros. We used to have an oil furnace and we used to have, if you look behind my lathe, this big tank with 3,000 litres of heating oil. Now, of course, we used up most of the heating oil before we changed the furnace, but I think there's at least two or 300 litres of good quality heating oil still in this tank. Aha! If I only had a diesel heater from Vivor, <laughs> I could heat my workshop. That's the plan. So they sent me this beast. It doesn't plug into the home power supply. It's for a pickup truck or an RV, a recreational vehicle, and comes with a power lead for a 12 volt battery. Okay. But when I looked at the Vivor instructions, it said the preheat, the glow plugs and the pump, when it, only when it first initializes, needs 12 volts at 15 amps. Oh, I don't really have a 12 volt, 15 amp power supply. Well, I've got a whole lot of old batteries, 12 volt batteries kicking around from cars, lawn tractors and things. So let's give it a try and I'll show you what it does. <laughs> So I put some oil in it, and let's turn it on, and it says... Start heating! Start heating! Good. The lawn tractor battery, the Beaver diesel heater. There's a slight airflow as it initializes. It's telling me that currently it's four degrees in here, so I definitely need some kind of heating. And it says in the instructions, after maybe a couple of minutes wait, it pumps the fuel and fires up uh, the heater, and then hot air is going to come out of here. I push it up against this exterior door because the exhaust pipe goes out under the door. Uh-oh! E01! Supply voltage overrun. So I look up E01 in the book and it says um, you just don't have enough power. Uh, you need a bigger battery. Ha ha! So let's be very smart and let's bring in a bigger battery. So this is an old car battery and it's, it's fine. Uh, it's fully charged. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it up in parallel using jump leads, good heavy duty jump leads, right? So now we've got two batteries. There, it's still 12 volts, but we've got double the power. Let's see how this does. Start heating. So 12 volt battery, feeding a second 12 volt battery and then 12 volts are coming out. What I'm doing is increasing the amps rather than the voltage. 
the fans blowing, and... Oh no! Two 12 volt batteries. This one is a 680 amp hour battery. Old, but fully charged. And this is a brand new lawn tractor battery. Still EO1. What do I do? The next step turns my house into the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. No, I'm joking. Just don't do what I'm doing because there is a solution and I'll get to the solution at the end of this video. But I'm just going through the process that I went through. So these two batteries have failed. So what I thought I'd do is get a battery charger Here's my battery charger. And it's really important to get an old battery charger. One of the ones that just uh, works uh, by putting out uh, power all the time, rather than ones that are electronic. Uh, and then it, this will just put out up to five amps extra um, to the whole system. There's one lead. This is a Chernobyl nuclear disaster waiting to happen, I can tell. And there's another lead. I think I'm going to put them on here. Definitely on there, and a spark. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. Still got EO1, and the battery charger is three amps. So... Start heating. Come on, Viver. Let's give me some heat. So now we've got a new lawn tractor battery. Doesn't work. S uh, parallel connection to an old car battery. Together, still doesn't work. And now with a battery charger, topping up the whole system to the heater. And you can see now that the battery charger is now drawing four amps as the Viva heating unit is um, gearing up to produce some toasty warmth in my workshop. It's currently, oh, it's up to seven, so it's getting a bit warmer, but it's still not warm enough to work. Let's see what happens. Come on, Viva. The next thing that the heater should do is you should start hearing the pump Pressurizing the burner. Uh oh. Supply voltage over what? Yeah, supply voltage EO1 again. Oh, come on. So now I've got two batteries and a three amp battery charger, and the Viva heater still doesn't work. <laughs> I've got another plan. Underneath this, I have actually got a laboratory power supply. Here it is and uh, it will put out 12 volts at different amperage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this onto um, this first battery somehow. So battery, jump lead to a second battery, battery charger and power supply. And the heater seems to still be working. Maybe this time I will get warmer. <laughs> But this is a hell of a setup just to run a diesel heater. Now I'm being cheap. A decent battery <laughs> would actually sort this out. But you would think that a lawn tractor brand new battery, an older car battery, <laughs> a battery charger and a laboratory power supply all looping together to provide the Viva heater with 12 volts. <laughs> would actually make it work. Nope, it's not going to work. I'm cold. <laughs> so, there is an issue. There is an issue of using this at home. I think you need a massive truck battery. Um, but a massive truck battery is going to cost me so much money. Uh, I'm not going to buy one. So stay tuned because I do have, I hope, a solution to make this Vivor diesel heater work inside your house. 
And this is how I get the heating oil out of the tank. I bought a very cheap siphon with a hand pump and I can fill up an old water bottle full of this elixir of life, my old heating oil, saving me tons of cash. One week later. So, here we are again, and I've got it all up and running, thanks to this. So what I've done is found a 12 volt, 15 amp power supply that works off the mains rather than working off a battery. It doesn't do the voltage under on anymore. And the remote control works. Let's switch it on. And let's see what it does to heat up my workshop. So here we go. What it's doing right now is blowing out cold air out of the heater. When it purges the heating element, it will, you'll hear the uh, oil pump coming on. You put oil in here, oil as in diesel fuel, or in my case, I'm using heating oil. You'll hear the pump coming on, bang, 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 as it primes the heater. The igniter comes on and then starts blasting out like a jet pipe. And it really does heat up the workshop. This is exactly what I've always wanted to actually use and heat up my workshop while I'm working on the lathe. And it's using used heating oil. It is fantastic. But the big mod was putting in a decent 12 volt, 15 amp power supply so I can actually run it off the mains. Here it goes. The little banging noise is the fuel pump. There's the jet pipe igniting. At this point, it's introducing fuel into the burner, just like a jet engine on an airplane. This little faintest smell of burnt kerosene or diesel fuel but it's actually quite pleasant. Pressure and temperature are now building. There we have it. Take off. It's aiming now for 30 degrees Celsius. It's currently at 13 in the workshop. Plenty of hot air being pumped out of the Vivor diesel heater. And it will run like this, warming the workshop now until it runs out of fuel, where it will safely shut down. Excellent. So here I am in a toasty workshop, working on the lathe, being happy and productive because it's warm. Uh-oh. But sadly, not for long. After about a week of the Vivor diesel heater working perfectly, it just stopped. So I contacted Vivor customer support. So here I am again with a bit of an update. The eagle-eyed of you will notice that this is actually a different diesel heater. I've also completed and boxed in safely my homemade power supply. What went wrong? Well, the first Vivor diesel heater just broke after about 10 days, but that's actually a really good test by me for you, for Vivor's customer services. They apologized, told me not to send it back, shipped me a brand new unit, their latest model at no cost. It got here in two days, it works, and maybe I can fix the old one. I'm not sure what actually went wrong with it, but this one, seems to work even better. I think this bigger model actually might be eight kilowatts instead of five, I'm not sure. But whatever, it pumps out plenty of heat for my workshop. And it is December, rather nippy. So, as I said, if you want a diesel heater, consider the Viva model. They do seem to work. And as tested by me, if you do have a problem, 
Viva customer support are super, super helpful. And in my experience, replaced my broken unit with an updated model in two days. What's not to like? Link in the description if a diesel heater is something that you would like, because this Viva model might actually heat your house and save you a lot of money. Thanks for watching.